Hi, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores. And like I said, I'm coming with a video every day, even though I am not at home. Now, I'm sticking to it. And today, we're covering a big time Washington Commanders draft update. So make sure you buckle up because there, there's a lot going on in this video. I have so much information that I'm so excited to get to y'all. We have some top 30 visits and meetings updates. We have Michael Penix Jr. visit. We're going to talk about that. We also have a leaked list and a confirmed list. Let's separate those two. We'll address the leaked list at the end of the video, but we're going to really dive into the confirmed list of visitors coming to Ashburn for those meetings. And then we're going to have a quick breakdown of every confirmed visitor, and we're going to have a rundown on each player's weaknesses and strengths, and where they're projected to go in the draft as well. For Again, all of that for the confirmed guys. Then we'll dive into the leaked guys later because I don't want to do too, too much of a deep dive on those guys just in case if that is just false information. We don't want to just completely dive into that and then it just be completely wrong. So before we dive into all of that, Make sure you still follow that like button, still follow the subscription button, and still follow the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one. I've been super busy because I'm on vacation, but I've been seeing some of the comments and I saw some people say like, man, you're on vacation, just enjoy it. I know, man, I'm enjoying it outside of, you know, I got to get these videos out though. You know what I'm saying? We got to keep that going, but I appreciate y'all for the love and the patience and basically telling me hey man you on vacation just chill man i appreciate y'all but we got man we got to keep these videos going man i mean first of all even while i'm on vacation i'm looking at this information like ooh, ooh, ooh. it's only right that i feel like that I, um that i gotta at least record it and break it down real quick for y'all as well even if my videos aren't 30 minutes to an hour long like they are when i'm at home i'm at least gonna give y'all some type of update while i'm here but yeah man let's go ahead and dive into this video real quick man let's get it. adam adam We're starting with the top 30 visits, the confirmed ones. And also remember, before we even dive into this, these are called top 30 visits for a reason. Teams are limited to only 30 players that they can bring into their facilities and do everything that they want to do with them with no strict time limit as well. So out of all of these draftable players coming up in less than a month, the commanders are only allowed to bring 30 of them in maximum, like very max limit and so there has to be some strong interest there because if you're bringing them in again you only have 30 guys you can bring in if you're bringing a guy in you're using one of those limited 30 visits you have on a guy there has to be some strong interest but at the same time you never know maybe they could be using these as smoke screens and but i'm assuming that there's at least some real interest in all of these players because remember last year Quan martin went to Ashburn for a top 30 visit. Now, granted, a different regime and everything, different head coach, different general manager, different owner, all of that. But most people assume that he will be available in the third round, maybe even fourth, and the commanders took him in the second. So you just never know. If they bring him in for a top 30 visit, they probably really like him. But again, Adam Peters could be playing a completely different game here and using it as a smoke screen, as a distraction. So who knows? But before we get into the leak list again, that has not been confirmed at all let's start with the confirmed list with the ones that we can trust like yeah the commanders are actually for real bringing these guys in and already have or plan to do so in the near future so we have kiran amagaje from yeah i still don't know how to pronounce his last name i already did a whole video on him and i still am not sure of exactly how to pronounce his last name but that's the tackle from yale we have Jaden daniels quarterback from lsu we have cornerback cam hart from notre dame we have edge Javante John Baptiste from Notre Dame as well. We have cornerback Elijah Jones from Boston College. We have Marshawn Nealon, edge rusher from Western Michigan. We have Jordan Morgan, offensive tackle from Arizona, and tight end Jatavion Sanders from Texas. Now, Kieran from Yale, Jordan Morgan from Arizona, and Jatavion Sanders from Texas. We've already done full breakdown on those guys, so we're going to go ahead and skip past that. Also, it's confirmed that we're meeting with Michael Penix as well for a top 30 visit. And nobody should really be surprised by this, but how much can we really dive into this? How much do we actually really need to pay attention to this? Is there really a strong consideration for the commanders to potentially end up taking a Michael Penix Jr.? We're going to dive into that soon, but again, I just want to talk about the fact that 
We've already covered covered the Yale offensive tackle, Kieran, the Arizona tackle, Jordan Morgan, and the Texas tight end, George, Jatavion Sanders. So if you missed that video, go ahead and check that out because I broke down their weaknesses, strengths, and what rounds I'm expecting them to go in and all of that type of stuff. And just like we're going to do for some of these guys as well, even though I went further in depth for those guys in that video, because we're only talking about those three guys in that video. This video, we're talking about so many guys, so it's going to be like a quicker, more rapid run through. This is what he's good at. This is what he's bad at. Athleticism and what round he's projected to go in and things like that. It's going to be a little bit quicker in this video. So if you want like a super in-depth breakdown on the Yale tackle, the 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 Jordan Morgan guy from Arizona, Jatavion Sanders, the, the Texas tight end, go ahead and check out that video as well. So we're not going to break these guys today as far down as we did those guys, but we're still going to get to them. So moving on from the guys that I have not covered yet, starting with Michael Penix Jr., this all started when Jordan Schultz tweeted out, things are getting heated up for Washington quarterback Michael Penix Jr. Sources say he had dinner with the Giants in Seattle after his pro day, followed by a private workout with the Vikings in Seattle. And then Michael Penix will have top 30s with Broncos, Falcons, Raiders, and the Commanders. So we're one of those teams included in that, but there's clear interest all across the board for a lot of those guys. And I feel like the Broncos or the Falcons or maybe even the Raiders or a more re realistic landing spot for Michael Penix Jr. But you never know. Maybe the commanders fall in love with them and are willing to trade back to get them. You absolutely have no idea at this point. And I feel like he's pretty underrated. Now, do I want him at second overall? No. Do I want us to trade back to get him? Not necessarily that either. But if we ended up doing that, there's some traits there that I could use to convince myself that it was the right thing to do. You know what I'm saying? But at like face value, no, I'm not. I want Jaden Daniels first and I want Drake May second. And then anybody else after that is like a distant third, whatever order you may have them in and things like that. I mean, of course, Caleb Williams is my quarterback one. But again, we're just assuming Caleb Williams going to the Bears. So outside of that, I want Jaden Daniels like 1A. I want Drake May 1B. And then everybody else is a distant third and further down. But... When it comes to Michael Penix specifically, first of all, it's between him and Jaden Daniels for who has the best deep ball in his 2023 draft class. Like, I give the slight edge to Jaden because stats and advanced stats wise, he like killed everybody, including Michael Penix. But Michael Penix is right behind him on that deep ball, especially when it comes to the eye test. You could also argue that he's the best pocket passer out of all of the top draft quarterbacks as well. So there's some advantages there. And like I've seen comps to Steve Young and CJ Stroud and all kinds of things. But the Kirk Cousins comp that I saw some time ago is actually not too bad. That's probably the one that I feel like is the closest to him because I feel like he's basically Kirk with a better deep ball, in my opinion. But also, he comes with a serious injury history, which is why we're here and why he's probably not a top five pick. But if it weren't for the injury history, and if he was like two years younger, he would be a top five pick. But that's his biggest weakness right there. The injury history, that's the part that's scary. And that's the long story short version, like a very quick synopsis of who he is. If, we're, if we were only talking about Michael Penix Jr. in this video, I would go far more in depth like I've done for Jaden Daniels and Drake May. But I'm going to leave it to that for now because this video will end up being like an hour long if I do my real deep dive into Michael Penix Jr. So be on the lookout for that sometime before the draft, sometime maybe next week or the week after that. Stay tuned for that. I just wanted to give like a quick little synopsis. I didn't want to just only announce we're meeting with Michael Penix Jr. I wanted to give you a little bit of weaknesses, a little bit of strengths, and then we can go ahead and keep it pushing. Now moving on. Another quarterback is LSU quarterback Jaden Daniels. He has a top 30 meeting scheduled with the Commanders. And you know, again, this is my favorite quarterback, especially outside of Caleb Williams. So I'm super excited. And I've already done a full video breakdown on Jaden Daniels. Matter of fact, I've done more than one super breakdown on Jaden Daniels. I even did a video where it's like over 40 minutes long breaking down Jaden Daniels versus Drake May. Who's better at what specifically? Jaden Daniels is better at this. Drake May is better at this. And I went down a whole list of very specific traits and stats and all of that type of stuff. So if you haven't gone to go check that out, make sure you go check that out. I've already done full multiple breakdowns of Jaden Daniels. So we're not even going to sit here and do that here. But of course, we all know that the commanders had dinner with Jaden Daniels, JJ McCarthy, and Drake May. That's confirmed. But out of the top four consensus quarterbacks, when we're talking about from what everybody is talking about out there, the media and everything, you got Caleb Williams, Drake May, Jaden Daniels, and J.J. McCarthy. Those top four 
Only Jaden Daniels has been confirmed by trustworthy sources that have a top 30 meeting so far. Not to say that we didn't plan on bringing those other quarterbacks in for a visit or that we never will or that we already haven't and nobody just hasn't, hasn't updated us on it. But I just want to let you know that Jaden Daniels is the only confirmed one. And, but I do want to let y'all know to also not overreact. And then outside of the top four, if you're just talking about all of the top quarterbacks available in this draft, it's just Jaden Daniels and Michael Penix right now. They're the only confirmed top 30 visits that we have taken place in Ashburn where we watch them throw. They throw what we want them to throw specifically. They're not running down a script that they created or that like just the national, like really just the NFL created. Like it's going to be a Cliff Kingsbury specific this is the, these are the type of throws we want you to be able to throw if you're our quarterback. Like, that's why these visits are so important, man. They get to sit down and talk to them for longer than the 20 minute limited time that they had at the combine. They watch a lot of tape together, go over the bad plays, the good plays. They really just actually test them. They get them to explain their plays. Like, what were you thinking here? All of that type of stuff. So those top 30 visits are probably only second to the actual film in terms of what weighs the most in determining which quarterback this team will take number two overall. Even more than the pro days and even the dinners that they had, it's what they did on the field, number one most impactful, again, from what's on film and things like that. And then those top 30 visits, in my opinion, are number two, I'm assuming. Because they, I mean, they can sit down and spend the whole day with these guys. Again, the combine was like a limited 20-minute meeting. Dinner is just dinner. The, the the business can be another dinner. The business can be film room. They can be a whole drill that they run through, like make do these throws, do this. And you know, so those visits are very important, very, very important. But again, before we move on, there's no confirmation that the commanders are bringing in Drake May or JJ McCarthy into Ashburn for a top 30 visit, at least yet. Only Jaden Daniels and Michael Penix Jr. Now moving on to some of the other players that are visiting the Commanders I already have or will do it at some point, but these are confirmed. You have Boston College cornerback Elijah Jones. He has a top 30 visit scheduled with the Chicago Bears and the Washington Commanders. He also already spent time with the Kansas City Chiefs during the pre-draft process. He's an explosive athlete at 6'1", jump 42.5 in the bird in Indy, which was tied for first amongst all participants. He ran a 4-4-4. 40 yard dash, which was 10th amongst cornerbacks, not bad. So speed, check. Then he had a vertical jump of 42.5 inches, which was the best in his group, and a broad jump of 10, 11, which highlights his explosive athleticism and will uh, allow him to win some contested catch situations also if you're thinking about it laterally it will allow him to like break on the ball like maybe he reads something a little late but with those explosive legs he can probably break on the ball and close and his closing speed will be pretty good so he has the, the 40 time he has the vert he has the broad jump all of that and going straight from nfl draft buzz i completely agree however jones game isn't without his drawbacks his slender frame and challenges and short area quickness could pose problems against physical and quick-footed receivers concerns about his man coverage ability and run support also linger potentially limiting his versatility and scheme fit nfl teams will need to weigh these factors carefully considering whether his strengths in zone coverage and ball hawking can offset the limitations seen in his man-to-man -man scenarios and run defense so right now, zone coverage is his bread and butter, but when it comes to man coverage and run defense, it's a little woozy right now. In sum, Elijah Jones presents a mixed bag of high-end athletic traits and on-field achievements tempered by certain areas of concern. His combination of length, ball skills, and athletic testing results in him being an, an intriguing day three prospect with the upside to develop into a contributing member of, the, of a defensive backfield, especially in a zone heavy scheme. And of course, again, I'm trying to always give you all where these guys are projected to go in the draft and things like that. Draft Tech has them ranked the highest out of anybody that has them ranked at all. They have them ranked as their 100th player. So maybe like late third round and then the furthest down is espn 131 so maybe like early fourth round so that's somewhere about round where his range is so maybe with that 100 pick that we got from trading away chase young maybe we use that on elijah jones so maybe that's the range maybe late third early fourth round if you want to get a guy like this but if you love them if they really love them they're bringing him for a top 30 visit maybe they lean towards the prior where they go they don't even wait 
They take them in the late third with that, that compensatory pick that we got from the 49ers in the Chase Young trade. They don't even risk it. So who knows? Next up, the Commanders will host Notre Dame edge rusher Javante John Baptiste. Really, he's more of an Ohio State guy. He's just more recently coming from Notre Dame. Just like my boy A.D. Mitchell, Adonai Mitchell, spent his last most recent season with Texas, but he's really a Georgia Bulldog, won two championships with us, contributed heavily in those championships, having touchdowns and everything like that. But in this case, this guy spent his first four seasons at Ohio State, then transferred to Notre Dame this past season. But he's six foot five, 240 pounds. And again, he's coming in for a top 30 visit for the Washington Commanders. And at that size, and from the very little tape that I've watched, and, and granted, I, I should have said this at the very beginning of the video, but I did take a little bit of time to watch a little bit of tape on all of these guys. Now, a couple of these guys I've already watched like a lot of tape on, like Michael Penix Jr., Jaden Daniels, and a couple of the, the cornerbacks we're going to talk about in this video. I've already watched extensive tape on those guys just because I was already interested. But then after we, I saw that we have some of these meetings lined up or they've already happened or whatever, I at least made sure that everybody I'm talking about in this video... I watched at least a little bit of tape on him. But again, going back to Jean Baptiste, from that size and the very little tape that I've watched on him so far, he seems like a pass rush specialist type of guy, but he's weird because he's too small to be a 4 3 defensive end full time, especially against the run and like setting the edge. But then he's also not really athletic enough to be like a full on 3 4 outside linebacker. But he does come with some nice pass rushing floor with several moves and counters in his arsenal already. He already got that tool belt loaded. He's great at anticipating the snap count as well. It seems like he knows the snap count just as well as the offense does sometimes. He keeps his pad level low. He has violent hands and all of that. He's like completely the product of great coaching and great hard work, motor, all of that type of stuff. He has like literally all of the mental and nuanced parts of the edge rusher down pack. All of the things that we wanted Chase Young to gain, this guy has it. But then at the same time, he doesn't have anywhere near Chase Young's athleticism. If you could take Chase Young's natural athleticism and then give him John Baptiste's technique and nuance, he would be one of the best edge rushers in the NFL. So, it, I mean, they're basically polar opposites. If you could Voltron them together, then maybe we have something here. But who knows? Again, this is a guy that comes in with a pretty decent floor, but he doesn't have much of a ceiling just because, again, his limited athleticism. But all of the nuanced stuff, all of the things that coaches get paid millions of dollars to teach these guys to do, this guy pretty much already comes into the NFL with that. So if you need a guy that can contribute immediately, maybe he makes sense. I feel like with us already having Dante Fowler, that it doesn't make much sense for us not to go with the guy with the higher ceiling, but you never know. Maybe they think they, they, that Dante Fowler will contribute less than I think or barely even play or something like that. Who knows? But I'm expecting Dante Fowler to go out there and play. He just came off of his best statistical season of his NFL career last year. So I don't know. This is a weird situation, but ESPN has him ranked the highest out of all of the... It's only four websites to have this guy ranked. Usually, like, if you go look at Jaden Daniels on NFL Draft Buzz or, or NFL Mock Draft Database and things, they'll have, like, over a dozen places to have them ranked. This guy is only ranked by ESPN, NFL.com, Draft Buzz, and MDDB. And ESPN has him ranked the highest by far at 158. MDDB has him all the way down to 245. And so really like the middle is like somewhere in the early 200s. So I'm expecting this guy to probably go somewhere well into day three, like maybe sixth round, maybe even seventh probably is where I'm expecting this guy to go. And if they want to go higher floor but lower ceiling guy that late i guess i could see it me personally i prefer to go higher ceiling those later picks because it's kind of like what's the risk you could potentially end up with a great player but you could also i mean it's just a sixth or a seventh round pick and we're not trying to throw draft picks away but i prefer to take a risk on a higher ceiling boomer bus guy later in the draft like that than a guy like john baptiste but hey man he comes in you know he's going to contribute. If we didn't sign Dante Fowler, I'd be a huge fan of bringing this guy in. Somebody that we know for a fact can get after the quarterback immediately. But we already have Dante Fowler. So I think this is really interesting. We'll see what happens. Again, they're spending a top 30 visit on this guy. There must be some strong interest there. Then another Notre Dame guy. You have cornerback Cam Hart, who has in-person visits, top 30 visits with the Bears and the Commanders. And he's six foot three, 202 pounds with 33 inch arms. He's scheme versatile. He can play both inside and outside and he loves press man 
coverage. To go straight from NFL Draft Buzz, I completely agree with their assessment for him, like literally almost 100%. On the upside, his physicality and technique and press coverage stand out, allowing him to disrupt routes and compete against top-tier receivers. His ability to adapt from a receiver to a cornerback has endowed him with exceptional ball skills. You can tell he used to be a receiver. And route anticipation. However, Hart's play is married with inconsistencies, notably in deep coverage and run support. He's just a really good cover corner that occasionally gets beat deep. And also, you got to convince him to be better against the run, which, I mean, a lot of corners just never get that. They're just like, hey, man, you pay me millions of dollars to cover the Justin Jeffersons, the Jamar Chases, the Cooper Cups, and guys like that. You don't pay me to go and tackle Derrick Henry. Like, the reason you're paying me million dollars a year is to shut down these routes, not to go and tackle these big huge running backs and things like that so usually a lot of these guys just never gain that but maybe dan quinn and joe wood jr can convince them they could teach them coach them up and get that mentality out of them because right now he just wants to cover guys that's all he wants to do he wants to lock down receivers he don't want to be taxed with doing nothing else once a running back has the ball you might as well take him off the field basically he doesn't want nothing to deal with it but his hesitation to fully invest in his instincts tends to lead to missed opportunities for interceptions and key defensive plays. So you also got to get him to be a little bit more confident in himself because he has flashes where it's just like, oh, man, like he was super confident there. He knew what was going to happen and had the athleticism and and the, the play ability to go make a play on it. And then there's sometimes it just seems like he doesn't trust himself. And I'm not exactly sure where that comes from. But that's something I'm sure that Dan Quinn, Joe Witt Jr., and Jason Simmons can coach out of him. Also, the strengths Hearts brings to the table, such as size, athleticism, and football IQ, make him a valuable asset in schemes that can leverage his zone coverage skills and his press ability. His leadership as a team captain and resilience through injuries just demonstrate professional mindset and dedication. I completely agree with that as well. Yet the transition to the NFL require Hart to enhance his man coverage technique and improve his ability to shed blocks and support the run. These improvements are crucial for Hart to become a well-rounded defender capable of taking on the league's diverse offensive threats. When you're talking about coverage ability, man coverage is still a little shaky and then his deep down the field coverage is a little shaky as well. But anything else other than that, this guy is a pure cover corner that if you had to put him against a lot of the top receivers in the NFL, you can trust him to do that. Even as a rookie, and you know, cornerbacks have the largest learning curve out of any position group outside of quarterback, obviously. But outside of cornerback, outside of quarterback, cornerback has the biggest learning curve. Even the most elite corners typically don't look great until really like their second or third seasons. That's just how cornerback works like receivers. Offensive linemen, edge rushers, you kind of expect them to go out there and deliver day one. But cornerbacks, you got to give them a little bit more leeway because the jump from college to the NFL as far as who you're covering as receivers is just probably the biggest jump out of any position group in football. So this is a guy that I'm expecting. I'm not expecting him to go out there and cover Justin Jefferson day one, but I think he has the potential and he seems like the type of guy that if you ask him to, he's going to go out there and compete and, and give it his all. He's not going to be afraid of the moment. And even if Justin Jefferson gets the better best of him on one play, he's going to come right back out with that same confidence if, as if nothing happened the next play. So I would be super down to get a guy like Cam Hart. And then according to Walter Football, they have him ranked the highest by far as like an early second round pick, 36 overall and then pro football focus has them ranked the lowest out of all of the like eight or nine draft websites that have them ranked at 119 so it's seeming like somewhere in the middle the majority of them are going from like 89 to like 104 that's five of them like the real heart and middle of this so i'm expecting him to probably go somewhere middle of the third round probably maybe early third maybe late third somewhere third round is where i'm expecting him to potentially go and remember we have three third round picks so don't be surprised if we go and get this guy because again top 30 visits are very important and then if you want to look at one of his man coverage reps actually at the the senior bowl this is a really good rep for him especially for man coverage to really be his weakness now i love him and press Love him in press man coverage, but just man coverage in general, especially having to cover for an extended period of time, they'll necessarily love that. But I feel like this was a great rep right here. Here you go.
So maybe he's worked on it and has improved since we last saw him play a game in college. Maybe sometime during his offseason, he's really just sat down and got into the zone on how to figure out how to get better in man coverage. So who knows? If the commanders are bringing him, him in for a top 30 visit, they're probably going to try to check out his man coverage since that's one of his biggest weaknesses. And, I mean, again, that play he made in the Senior Bowl, that's all Dan Quinn and Joe with Junior won. Y'all know they're takeaway gods. And if this guy can create interceptions like that, this is going to be a dream pick for them. They may even take him sooner than a lot of people think just if they truly believe in his athleticism and his potential and everything like that. And if they feel like they can improve his man coverage and somehow convince him to be a better run support guy, this may be a steal in the third round if that's where we end up getting him. Now, moving on, the Washington Commanders also plan to host Western Michigan defensive end Marshawn Nealon for a top 30 pre-draft visit as well. And really short, I agree with Draft Buzz here. Again, off of the just the very little tape I've seen of this guy. I'm not even going to sit here and lie and act like I watched a lot on him. But so far from what I've seen, I agree with Draft Buzz here as well. Marshawn Nealon enters the NFL draft as a high motor, power-based defensive end with an established track record of terrorizing the backfield. Nealon's strength and ability to top set the edge make him a formidable run defender while his bull rush technique has been effective in collapsing pockets. Despite a non-elite athletic profile, his versatility and motor have compensated, allowing him to adapt across defensive schemes. So basically, this guy is a true edge setter. He doesn't give you much pass rush upside outside of just straight up bull rushing a guy. His whole game is strength, straight up just strength power i'm gonna run through you and if you're trying to run the ball my way i'm gonna stonewall everybody here i'm gonna set the edge and that running back better not even try to go outside of me because i'm gonna go bring them down so there's no running the ball my way and then even if you're passing the ball you better watch out because i'm running through you to get to the quarterback i don't have these fancy moves where i can go around you i don't have hand moves i don't have counters but if you need somebody to be just a strong presence that is your guy. And I can see this guy going probably sooner in the draft than anybody else other than the quarterbacks that we've talked about today. Literally, arguably, his biggest weakness is the fact that he played for Western Michigan. So there's, of course, some like competition, level of competition concerns. But when you're looking at the tape, this guy could probably go easily second round, third round at the latest. And taking a look at it where he's potentially ranked for a lot of the draft analysts out there, Fox has them as the highest at 52nd, but ESPN 54th, Pro Football Focus 58th, MDDB 60th, Draft Tech 65th. The lowest person on them is NFL.com by far with 124. So really, if you're looking at like the averages and where most people have them, he's looking like he's probably going to go second round, third round at the very latest. And... If you want this guy opposite of Dorrance Armstrong, Dorrance Armstrong provides a little bit more pass rush upside while also improving as a run defender and edge setter. This guy's pure edge setter, run defender. And then if there's any hope of him getting to the quarterback, it's going to be because he ran through somebody to get to him. So they're kind of different in that way. Dorrance Armstrong is the better pass rusher. This guy is the better run defender. And maybe you could use both on the defensive line and I could see them bringing him in potentially. But again, I, I, I'm not even entirely sure if he makes it out of the second round. But again, we have two second round picks. We have two. We have three thirds. So I wouldn't be surprised if we use one of those picks on a guy like this. This guy is the most highly coveted, highly ranked guy out of anybody we talked about today outside of the quarterbacks, of course. So just to keep that in mind. And now that's the confirmed list. Let's move on to the leak list again that I haven't personally seen anybody close to the team confirm yet. Those other names that we've given you, there have been confirmation from guys close to the team. We are as about as sure as those have happened or will happen as we can get. This leak list just came out of absolutely nowhere. I saw at Redskins Colt tweet this and I've seen people talking about it as if it's a real list. So we'll see. I just want to keep emphasizing I have not seen any confirmation from anybody close to the commanders on this list. But you have offensive tackle Kieran, who I've already talked about and done a video on. You have running back Jonathan Brooks. You have offensive tackle Brandon Coleman. You have quarterback Jaden Daniels, safety Jaden Hicks. We have defensive end Javante John Baptiste, who we just talked about in this video. You have quarterback Drake May, quarterback J.J. McCarthy. Jordan Morgan, the tackle we've already talked about, quarterback Bo Nix. Defensive tackle Darius Robinson, who I think would be a great pickup in the second round. 
Um, and then you have linebacker Tevin Wallace. You have tight end Jatavion Sanders, who we've already talked about, and then cornerback Elijah Jones as well. Then you have wide receiver Ronan Wilson, and I think he's extremely underrated. I feel like this is such a great receiving class. Any other receiving class, he would be talked about way more, but there's just so many elite receivers. Literally, the wide receiver group is the best position group in this draft. I feel like by far. I don't even feel like it's close. It's some elite players at the top. It's a lot of great depth in the middle. And then there's some sleepers you can get in the late rounds as well. This is one of the deepest receiver classes I've ever seen. And poor Roman Wilson, he just decided to come out at the wrong time. Because if he came out in any other draft class, this guy would be far more talked about than he is right now. Very slept on. Then you have quarterback Caleb Williams. You have wide receiver Brian Thomas. I love his ceiling. His ceiling is insane. Athletic profile. Um, the people over there, um, I think at Underdog, I forgot. I, I know it's uh, Josh Norris and Hayden Hicks. They have their own show. And they were talking about Brian Thomas. And one of them literally said he's basically like a six foot three Terry McLaurin. Literally just a taller, bigger Terry McLaurin. Same speed, same everything else. They just felt like Terry McLaurin was better at attacking the ball and high pointing it. He's like more aggressive. But other than that, they see him as six foot three Terry McLaurin. And that's high praise right there. And, and, and from I haven't watched film on Brian Thomas, but from the highlights I've seen, this guy's serious. Maybe we consider getting him earlier than what people think. Maybe we go receiver sooner than what most people project us to go. Then you have quarterback Michael Penix, of course. You have running back Marshawn Lloyd. You have wide receiver Josh Cephas. You have quarterback Kevin Slovis and wide, and wide receiver Malik Washington. And running back Bucky Urban, who I've already done a mock draft. I've, I've mocked him to us in like three or four mock drafts already just this offseason alone, man. I've done like six mock drafts. I've mocked him to us like three times already, I think, because I just feel like he's the perfect pickup somewhere in like the third round. Again, we have three third round picks. Maybe you wait until later, but I probably wouldn't even chance it. I think he's such an electric football player. I feel like he would be the perfect balance to a Brian Robinson. I know we have Austin Eckler, but, you know, running backs age like milk. They age in dog years. So who knows how long Austin Eckler will be able to keep up what he's doing. He's only signed to a one-year deal. You go ahead and bring Berkey Irvin now. And then by next year, when Austin Eckler probably doesn't re-sign with us, that's your Austin Eckler right there, potentially. So you never know. Because again, Austin Eckler was an undrafted free agent. So it's not far-fetched to say that Bucky Irvin is going to be as good as 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 a Austin Eckler was because Bucky Irvin is more highly touted coming out of college so who knows but I'm very high on Bucky Irvin again I've mocked him to us like three times already so stay tuned for that one but again that list I just gave you are all unconfirmed so who knows if we're actually going to meet with these guys if we actually will or anything like that but there you go. That's all of the top quarterbacks. If you were wondering about Drake May, J.J. McCarthy, Bo Nix, any of those guys, Caleb Williams even, in the unconfirmed list, we are apparently already have met with them or will meet with them. But again, unconfirmed. I want to keep emphasizing that. But yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Please get in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video. Please still follow me that like button, still follow the subscription button, and still follow me the bell next to that subscription button so you get a notification each and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one. Make sure you stay tuned because again even though i'm on vacation with the family and all of that i had to find like a room where i could get some peace and quiet because it's a lot of us here so it's loud but found like a room where it's not as loud with a decent background behind it even though that that tree look a little african i don't know it don't it don't really look it look like i left the country it ain't all that serious now um but yeah i'm still coming to y'all with all of the updates at least one video a day i mean maybe i could try to sneak in a second we'll see but i'm really gonna get back to work once I finally get back home and I can start doing film sessions for a lot of these draft prospects that I'm really interested in, all that type of stuff. So make sure you stay tuned. I really appreciate y'all. I'll catch y'all later, man. I'm out.